Well, hello there and welcome to my new channel. Uh, I am Debs, nice to meet you. I am a 40-something mother of two, British expat living in Dubai, been here for just over six years now, uh, and of my channel. I will be focusing on all things to do with expat life and living here, specifically, of course, in Dubai, where I am. So, in today's video, I am going to be talking about my top tips for you guys when you are coming to visit Dubai. Things you need to consider before you get here and things that you need to be aware of when you are here. So without further ado, grab your coffee or your tea or whatever tip will you so choose. Sit back, relax and let's have a chat. So whether you're visiting Dubai to see friends that already live here or family or you're here on a business trip or simply you're just here on holiday, there are quite a few things that you just need to be aware of that are useful. There are so many misconceptions when it comes to visiting the Middle East, so I really want to help you. I'm going to divide the video into two. The first part is going to be things that you really need to think about when you're planning your visit here and the second part is going to focus on things that you just need to be aware of whilst you're actually in the country. Um, I'll put timestamps in the bottom, so uh, any particular sections you want to jump to, feel free to do that or join me for the whole video and uh, let's, start, let's get started. Top tip number one, the weather. <laughs> The weather is fantastic here in Dubai. Um, blue skies pretty much every day. Kind of only rains about twice a year, which is lovely. Uh, but you do need to be aware of the humidity. So in the middle of summer, the heat can go up to 50 degrees, but it's not even necessarily the heat that will really get you, it's the humidity. Um, it averages out around 60%, but again, in the heat of summer, 90 to 100 percent it can get up to so it's ridiculous your head sweats it's very unpleasant you are wet the moment you walk out of an air-conditioned environment so really really just be aware that if you're here in the middle of summer the humidity is quite unbearable um there isn't any central heating so you know there's air conditioning everywhere which is essential but there isn't any central heating so you know for me <laughs> in the middle of winter uh i do actually get cold and i have jumpers and Ugg slippers and all that stuff that I wear during the winter time. And I always carry a jacket with me as well um, in the winter time as well. So not cold compared to the UK, for example, their winter, but cold and no heating inside. So just be aware of that if you're here during that season. Um, I always recommend that anyone that's here carry a bottle of water with you. I personally love these chili bottles um, because they are metal and you get smaller ones of these as well. So it always keeps the water lovely and cold even in the middle of summer. So that's my go-to, always have one of those on me. Top tip number two, plan where you're going to stay. Now, this may seem a really obvious thing. Of course, you're gonna book a hotel if you're here on holiday. That's goes without saying. So I'm gonna help you in terms of breaking down the areas that are really popular to stay in Dubai. Dubai is a lot bigger than people think it is. And there are over 492 hotels to choose from. So you are spoilt for choice. Of course, a lot of it comes down to budget and the kind of hotel, uh, holiday that you want to actually have whilst you are here. So four main areas that I wanna talk about. There is the Palm Jumeirah, beautiful. A lot of the hotels, their beaches are facing inwards as well. So it's ever so quiet and peaceful and they're beautiful five-star hotels. So it's lovely in terms of a location. It's also where the famous Atlantis Hotel is as well. So it's a fantastic location. However, it takes minimum 15 to 20 minutes to get in and off the palm. So it really adds to your time in terms of traveling around Dubai. Uh, so just something to really be aware of. Number two, downtown. So really hustle and bustle. It's where a lot of the businesses are. It's one of the key areas for one of the businesses. Um, it's also where Dubai Mall is and the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world. So it's a great location um, for seeing those main attractions. Um, Number three is Dubai Marina or JBR, which is Jumeirah Beach Residence. This is great for people who just want to go for a wander down the beach every day. Great location for that. You can't do that with those other areas uh, that I have mentioned. So it's fantastic for that. And, and those beaches are also free as well. Um, and there's also fantastic shopping and restaurants as well. So that's great. And a little, little tram that travels all the way around. So that's lovely as well. And it's air conditioned. Lovely. 
Okay, and the last one, number four. If you're here and if you're planning your holiday and you are on a little bit of a tighter budget, um, I would recommend an area called Albasha. Now, Albasha is right on the metro line, uh, which is fantastic in terms of getting around Dubai, but it's also right next door to Mall of Emirates. Mall of Emirates has great restaurants, great shopping. It also has a cinema in there and you have um, Ski Dubai is in there as well. So you've got some great entertainment things to do. So those are my top four areas to, re to consider in terms of booking your hotel. So top tip number three, plan your activities. I know this probably sounds completely obvious as well, but there's a couple of key points to really think about when you're thinking about what you're gonna do whilst you're here. So one of those things to definitely book in advance would be um, the at the top, which is going to the top of the Burj Khalifa, which is amazing. Definitely recommend that you would do that while you were here. But also if you're gonna do things like skydiving, you're gonna do things like um, maybe going on a boat trip, things like that, I would plan in advance. Check out Groupon as well, because quite often there's deals, especially for the at the top thing to do. Um, tap up your friends and your contacts that have been here and do and do live here as well if you know anyone they're the ones that will really be able to tell you which one of which ones of these activities um, are really worth doing and definitely not missing not to be missed while you're here there's huge amounts of entertainment actually within the malls Dubai Mall especially has something you know has cinemas VR park ice rink the aquarium is in there definitely won't recommend that one that's great uh, so there's loads to do and of course shopping shopping and more shopping uh, be aware that if you are shopping in the malls themselves you are going to pay more money than you would elsewhere it is expensive so if you can if you're coming out here to get a cheaper pair of trainers from Nike don't buy them in Dubai you're not going to get them cheaper for example however definitely pick up some of the local goodies that are here. So dates, they do some amazing pashminas, things like that. There is a souk within Dubai Mall, that's also expensive, but you can take a trip out to the old souk, the old part of Dubai, um, which is next to the canal, and there's things like the, the spice souk there, which is always worth a look around. There's a separate, there's a gold souk there, and there's a separate gold, um, gold park as well, which is available on the metro line. So those are the places to go if you particularly want to pick those up. One little top tip though is electronics. Quite often, weirdly, quite a few of the electronics are cheaper than buying them elsewhere in the world. It's like a little bit of an exception to everything being too expensive. So if you are planning on buying, say, a new camera or anything like that, definitely check out the electronics stores. You'll probably get them cheaper than you would elsewhere. Top tip number four. It's along the same lines of planning your activities, but a little bit different. A um, huge number of the things in Dubai are all based. We all live off social media and apps here. So one of the key apps to bear in mind is something called the Entertainer app. Uh, I'll pop a link to this down below so you can have access to it, no problem. Um, they have very recently launched a tourist app, which is fantastic. It lasts for 30 days, which of course is the length of your tourist visa. So that's ideal. Um, and it is actually under 40 pounds to buy. So it's hundred about 184 dirhams, uh, which is well worth its weight in gold. Now the entertainer app is everything on there is buy one, get one free. Now even eating out is reasonably expensive here. So, um, so worth it uh, to, to purchase this we purchase it every single year as a family and as I say I've been through it for about six years. Absolutely fantastic and it will help you with uh, brunches which I will cover a bit later, entertainment, eating out at restaurants, it will cover a huge number of things um, to be aware of. As a side note though I just want to mention when you are eating out in restaurants, not necessarily in malls, in fact never in malls to my knowledge but um, they most places are you can smoke indoors here in Dubai however caveat to that uh, a lot of the restaurants have specific closed off smoking sections so it shouldn't affect you too badly but when you are booking a restaurant or you're booking a brunch make sure to specify that you do want it in a non-smoking section if you're not a smoker top tip Number five, one of the really cool things about being here is something called ladies nights and more recently they've introduced gents nights and they're pretty much every night of the week. So it doesn't matter when you're here, you can take advantage of these. Um, ladies nights and gents nights are deals where you turn up and you can either pay one very small cost and get a load of free drinks and a load of free booze or you'll get your first 
three or four drinks free and you'll get a discount off food. It depends, loads of different places do different deals. But essentially what you can do is you can kind of go out for an evening and if you choose, and I did this when I came here on holiday for the first time years ago, I hopped between quite a few different bars um, and restaurants and ate loads of yummy food and got loads of free booze while I was here. So I had an absolutely fantastic time. So that's one of the things. Now, where to find out about Ladies and Gents Nights is the Time Out magazine. I still use this today. It's available online, just do a quick search and it will tell you what's available in which area and what night and how much it will cost you. Top tip number six. When you come here on holiday, my advice to you would actually be to come Wednesday to Wednesday. And the reason there's a reason for that. The working week in Dubai is different to say the UK where it's Monday to Friday. Here, it's Sunday to Thursday. Now on Friday, all the locals, all the Muslims, go off to church or to mosques. And uh, all, the lo all the expats go to something called brunches. Now brunches are amazing. They're not what we would call them in the UK or even in America. They're not the thing in between breakfast and lunch. They are. We arrive at kind of 12, 12 30, 1 o'clock. Sometimes they last for three to four hours, and you pay one amount of money, one set price, should I say. And it's all you can eat and all you can drink for that period of time. If you go to the really good ones, they also have entertainment as well. I've recently found one which I mentioned on my Instagram, uh, which is fantastic for children. They've opened up like a ballroom and it has a bouncy castle. So for the middle of summer, it's absolutely amazing for young children. Uh, but there are all sorts of different kinds of brunches that you can go to. Definitely a big recommendation if you come out to Dubai, you will have loads of fun. Um, and as I say, they're suited if you want a party brunch, if you want a quiet one, if you want to sit down or you want a buffet. There's so many different brunches in Dubai. Definitely recommend that you go to one. You'll have loads of fun. And again, like with the Ladies and Gents Nights, check out the Time Out magazine and that's where you'll get the information about what brunches are on, where, and the cost that's associated with them. So this is one of those things that I would also recommend, caveat, that you booked in advance because the really popular ones get super busy. Top tip. Number seven, I wouldn't advise hiring a car, which seems a bit odd because it's a city that you're coming to. Um, but a lot of the drivers here, not the locals, but a lot of the other drivers here, quite frankly, are crazy. And the road system is quite confusing as well. I've been here for six years and sometimes I still get lost driving around. Um, it will only really give you kind of added stress while you're here, to be honest. So I just wouldn't advise doing it. Other things to consider though, the taxis here are extremely cheap. You can use Uber and Kareem, which is an equivalent to Uber, and you can have normal taxis or you can hire slightly nicer cars uh, on the business travel here, which are called, which are usually Lexuses, and they're very, very pleasant to travel around in. Now, one of the key differences between Uber and Kareem versus different countries is the fact that they are actually licensed cars. So you never feel unsafe. I'll go out for a ladies' night and I'll come home at 12, one, sometimes two o'clock in the morning and I'll jump in a cab and never once have I felt unsafe doing that. Um, so always, it's definitely my top recommendation to do that. You can also often pay by card as well now in these taxis, so that's really good. Um, the other thing to consider is that there is a metro system that runs the length of Dubai and there is also a little tram system that circles Dubai Marina and JBR as well, but that's very localized. So the metro system is brilliant, it's clean, it's always on time. It's a very, it's air conditioned. It's a lovely way to travel to Dubai. It'll take you to the main locations as well. So it'll take you to, you know, your Mall of Emirates, Dubai Mall, even the airport. So that's a fantastic way to travel. My recommendation if you do travel by Metro is to get the gold card, which is slightly more expensive, not significantly so, but slightly more expensive. It's more pleasant. You're probably more likely to get a seat. Um, you can also have the views because it's at either end of the tra train, so you can see where the train is going. That's quite nice to see. Um, and I will, the card itself is called a Knoll card. I'll pop a picture on the screen um, and you can just buy them in the metro stations. I'll also pop a picture on the screen of what the metro stations look like because they have a very specific look to them, uh, which is really cool. But that's my uh, that's my biggest recommendation, really. Don't hire a car, use the public transport because it's fantastic. Top tip number eight, plan your visit around Ramadan. So Ramadan moves forward two weeks every year. This year it was mid April to mid May, so next year it's pretty much gonna be all of April, so next year's 2022. Um, 
what is Ramadan? Ramadan is a holy month. It is a month of prayer and it is a month of fasting. So any Muslims that are, that are following that will have nil by mouth between sun up and sun down, which in Dubai, in the summer is quite a long period of time where they're not drinking or eating so it's a quieter period in Dubai a lot of the restaurants close and do refurbishments and things like that during that during that month um, other things to really think about is that it has become a little bit more relaxed over the last couple of years uh, you know kind of even last year every single cafe was boarded up and you could go inside and have a drink in the malls but you could and you could take away a drink although you couldn't walk around and drink it so I kind of didn't really see the point of that but anyway um, that's what it, that's how it would work you know there's no loud music if you go to brunches uh there's no live entertainment it's just a lot more subdued and quieter during that time uh so it's really something that you need to think about whilst you're here now as i say it has become more relaxed however you're still really having to adhere to the local customs and even though last this year I did see people kind of walking around with a coffee and all the cafes weren't boarded up and I even went to a couple of brunches myself um, I still didn't walk around with a drink because I still felt quite uncomfortable doing it but just something to really be aware of definitely plan your visit around Ramadan top tip Number nine. Now, this is the last one before we move on to things to be aware of whilst you're here. Uh, but this is an interesting one, and that's booking. Bef when you book your flight, also book what I call what is called the Mahaba or the Ahlan service. I, I will put links to both of these down below for you so that you can easily see them. Essentially, it's concierge service, and it's fantastic. They will meet you at the gate. They will get you through um, the security, the, the border security, really, really quickly. And depending on what level you buy, they will also get your luggage off the luggage wheel that comes around. They'll even take it to the car and they'll even drive you to your hotel. This is something we always book for uh, something we booked when we moved to Dubai and came here on holiday and it's something we always book for any friends and family that are coming out here as well. It's not very expensive, but it's absolutely worth it in terms of just getting through the airport that much quicker and smoother. Not that it's not fantastic already, but just helps out. Okay, so now the next part of the video, I'm going to move on to things that you need to be aware of whilst you're actually in Dubai. So you've done all the booking, you've done the planning, got on the plane, and you're here, brilliant. So this is top tip number 10. Be aware of uh, the people that speak English. Now, all the sites are in English and Arabic, so you'll be fine, but this is a multinational, multicultural country and city. So the serving staff are, they do speak English, but it's usually um, not, it, not fluent. So just be aware of that and be extra patient and extra tolerant to those people that are here that do speak very basic English but aren't fluent like I am. So this is a really interesting one, buying alcohol. So when you are a resident in Dubai uh, or the UAE like I am, you need to have an alcohol license uh, to buy alcohol. Uh, now things have changed recently in the fact that before, unless you were in the hotel um, or out in the bars, you would be able to walk into an off license as a visitor and buy alcohol. You can now do that. You just need to take your passport with you and show them your, uh, your visit visa and you will be able to do that. But where to find them? So where you find off licenses is usually in the car parks of malls. So Mall of Emirates has one, the Imbatuta Mall has one, um, Marina Mall has one. Um, they're called either MMI, and again, I'll put little symbols on the screen. Uh, they're called either MMI or they're called, which always makes me laugh, this one, A&E, which actually sounds, stands for not accident and emergency as it does in the UK. It stands for African and Eastern, but we still call it A&E. <laughs> so just to be aware of where they're found. Other than that, uh, buying alcohol, when you're out at restaurants, restaurants also need a special license to serve alcohol. So a lot of restaurants are connected to hotels. If they are not connected to a hotel, chances are they probably won't serve alcohol. So just be aware of that when you're going out for a nice meal in the evening and you wanna have a bit of a drink while you're out. Okay, top tip number 12. Don't have enough fingers, 10, 12. Um, okay, so this is the one that I think is probably really, really important. So even if you don't watch any of the other points, 
watch this one. Uh, it's about respecting the culture and don't breaking the rules. Now, a lot of other people, a lot of other YouTubers kind of say, don't break the rules while you're here, but then they don't really say anything else. So I'm gonna be a bit more specific for you to actually help you as a visitor whilst you're here in Dubai. So look, Dubai is described as the Vegas of the Middle East but it's still a Muslim country. You're not actually in Vegas, be aware of that. Be aware of the laws. So I'm gonna go through a few specific. Now, the first thing I really wanna say is the locals, or what we call the locals, in other words, the Emiratis, are some of the most wonderful, caring, welcoming people that I have ever met. However, the culture is quite modest. So just think about that. Always remember you are a guest in somebody else's country. Um, so, no intoxicated behavior. If you stumble out of a bar, falling over, walking around drunk, bumping into people, could potentially get arrested. So don't do it, be respectful. Number two, no alcohol in unlicensed areas. So what do I mean by that? What I mean is, like in the UK, if you go and sit in a park, although I've never done this, but, or you could go down the beach maybe and have a few beers, that is an unlicensed area. So you cannot go to an off license, buy some beers and then take them to the beach and drink them. That is something that is illegal. You will probably be arrested if you are caught doing it. So I would recommend that you didn't. Public displays of affection is my next point really avoid it. Now, look, you can walk along holding hands. I often do this with my husband with no problem, but we don't really kiss in public. So just be aware, especially when you're in malls or places where um, there is a huge contingent of Muslim or lo the local population. Um, so just be very aware. Don't stand on the corner French kissing your partner. Not a good idea. Of course, nightclubs are a little bit of a different situation, but even in nightclubs and bars, you'll probably be separated. So just be aware. Um, now, the locals, as I've said to you, or the Emiratis, they're extremely friendly, but it is a conservative, uh, it is a conservative culture. So, and in terms of what you're dressing, so unless you are on the beach, don't wear your bikini. Don't wear a cover up that's got holes in it. I literally went to Dubai Mall two weeks ago to the aquarium and there was a girl walking around the aquarium with cutoffs on and half of her bum cheeks hanging out. It's incredibly disrespectful to the culture that's here. She probably at some point will have been stopped uh, by security. You can't do it, it's really disrespectful. Now, if you find yourself in a government building, however, which is unlikely if you're a visitor here, that's when you have to get really specific and cover up your shoulders and your knees. Other than that, you can walk around in a mall with shorts and a t-shirt on, that's no problem, but just make it a bit modest um, when you're doing that. Now, what's the other thing when you're going out? So if you're going out for an evening or you're going to a nightclub, don't be afraid of wearing a little, your LBD, that's fine. Um, you know, you can dress, uh, in the same way that you would do in the UK if you're going out for the evening. So that's not really a worry. It's more when you'll go to these big places where you know you just need to be aware of the culture. Um, another extremely key thing that I need to talk about is gestures. Now, I'm not gonna do it on film, but we all know what flipping the bird is or putting up the middle finger. It is highly offensive. It is a criminal act in this country. If you're seen doing it, or you're certainly seen doing it to an Emirati, just don't do it, is my advice. It's a criminal act, it's a form of defamation. Any form of defamation is illegal in this country. So if you are posting something online onto your social media accounts, make sure that anything you post isn't defamatory against uh, Dubai in any way, shape or form, and you'll be absolutely fine. Uh, lewd behavior, if you post that online and you're seen doing it in Dubai, well, I wouldn't do that either to be honest. Again, it's a conservative country. Be aware, be respectful, and you'll be fine. Swearing as well, you know, if you're being right, really, really loud, you're shouting at your friend who's down the other end of the restaurant or the street or wherever you happen to be, don't swear, don't do it. You know, if you're gonna swear, do it quietly where no one else can really hear. So that's my advice. So those are really the key things to think about when you are physically in the country, things that will get you in trouble, um, Again, I've never had any issues and I've been here over six years. So be respectful, it's a conservative country and you'll be absolutely fine. 
we've got to the end. This is it, my final point on my first video. Woo! Anyway, um, very last thing to consider, emergency services, something that often doesn't get talked about. Um, I'll put the notes again below and I'll pop them up on the screen as well. Emergency services. There are three numbers for emergency services. The police is 999, the ambulance is 998, and the fire brigade is 997. Be aware that they are those differences in this country. If you are staying with friends, this is another just key thing to consider um, and take note of. Take note of what's called the Makani number. Now, this is in all residences, and I will get I will again insert the picture of what it looks like. You find it just outside the front door. If you're staying with friends, they'll know exactly what I'm talking about anyway. Where that's really useful is that you can give the emergency services that number and they will immediately come to that location. It's easy for them to find you based on that number. So that's it, we've reached the end of my first video, woohoo! Hope you enjoyed it, hope you found it useful. If you've stayed to the end, thank you very much. Um, it's lovely to meet you. <laughs> anyway, look, I really wanna know in your comments that you have down below. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on what I've said. There might be things that I've missed or other things that you'd like to know about that you, you want me to cover off on a, at a later date. So do let me know those. Um, I will be uploading twice a week. I'm hoping to do that on a Monday and a Thursday. And of course, as I said right at the beginning, everything I'm gonna be considering is all about expat life here in Dubai. So I've got lots of things planned, so keep posted please hit the subscribe button and hit that notification bell so that you know when my new videos are gonna be uploaded. Um, and until then, look, I'll catch you in my next video. And as the Brits say, TTFN.